This is the first of a few rundowns I'm going to do over the uh, various modular components, uh, starting with the VCO, which is pretty much the heart of the uh, the synth itself. So this is a one that I've uh, acquired online from uh, Look One No Computer. Some really good uh, schematics around that. Um, it's essentially a SEM uh, three three forty uh, chip, which is that big one there, and. Quite a simple circuit because basically that chip does the vast majority of things. Um, it's just then supported with a, a fairly standard uh, TL44, uh, TL74 uh, op amp, which does a lot of the buffering and so forth for the output. Just make sure there's a high impedance. Um, so yeah, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, one volt per octave um, is what it works upon. Uh, simple control, so you've got uh, fairly coarse tuning there. There's a fine tuning knob on the back as well, just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, control for the uh, the finer tuning, as it were. Um, and then in terms of what it does, it's uh, basically three outputs. So you've got triangle, square, and sawtooth wave, and uh, they're all simultaneous. So you can either just you know, patch them individually or you can patch all three and obviously mix them up. Um, for the square wave, there's pulse width modulation. Um, which you can either just set the pulse width value there in terms of the duty cycle, either sort of zero to 50%. <clears throat> and then you've got the pulse width modulation control there, so you can actually modulate that from a, an external CV input. And uh, that sort of gives you some quite nice pulsating kind of effects and so forth. So typically put that on an LFO or something like that. And uh, yeah, that's it really. So that's, that's the core guts of it. Um, it's designed around the Mura rack format which is pretty much that size so uh, I think it's 3U and that's actually 8HP across so that's pretty much the st standard that I'm working to either the 8HP which is that width or the 4HP which is a thin one uh, it's fairly crude in terms of its construction yeah, standard Vera board as you can see uh, some fairly ropey soldering on my behalf um, but that's kind of what I wanted to try and achieve really just keep it sort of cheap and cheerful rather than having any uh, kind of pre-built circuit boards or anything overly clever like that um, standard Eurorack input as well in terms of power so plus minus 12 volts and 5 volt for logic circuits which I don't think is actually used on this particular chip because most of it's based around um, plus, volt, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts to get the uh, the full range um, kind of other notable things um, I think the chip works around uh, sort of optimal voltage around 12 to 15 volts that's sort of a legacy of the old sort of 70s designs um, the LFO and the CV inputs are typically 0 to, uh, to 10 volts um, and the output are nominal they're about uh, plus minus um, 5 volts so basically 10, 10 volts peak to peak um, yeah that's the sort of the guts of it really I'll, uh, I'll plug it into the uh, to the rack in a second and give you a shout as to uh, how it sounds and how we control it. Right, so the uh, the rack's now plugged into the uh, or the modules rather plugged into the rack, uh, sat there between the mixer and the uh, quantizer. Uh, not really using anything else on this, just using the mixer at the moment just to control the volume that goes into the audio interface. Uh, but what you should hear if I take that out a second just turn that up yeah fairly boring kind of uh, triangle wave which is coming out of here going through the mixer so if I just increase the coarse tune you can hear the various frequency change and the same thing if I go to the sawtooth wave a little bit harsher nice and jaggy and then finally on the square tooth uh, square wave rather Square wave has got the uh, pulse width modulation control, so you can change the duty, duty, duty cycle there. Make it a bit more interesting. It's quite nice to modulate that. You get that kind of throbbing effect. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really do an awful lot on its own, if I'm honest. <laughs> so if we uh, can make it do something a bit more tuneful, so I'm just going to patch the note CV into a step sequencer, and uh, what you'll hear there is some notes playing on tune so these are basically playing on one volt per octave uh, which is the standard for uh, controlling CV uh, notes 
Um, so again, not massively excitable because you've not got any envelope generator or any filters, so you're just getting the pure tone that's controlled. So if we change that over to the sawtooth. That's about it really, that's about as exciting as it gets for this particular step. Uh, we'll uh, probably wrap up here and uh, I'll do a couple of more uh, videos for the series and cover all the other bits and bobs that are in the rack. Um, particularly gets a bit more interesting when we start looking at envelope generators and filters because that starts to shape the sound a bit better. So uh, until next time, cheers.